welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my first video, so there's no way you've ever seen me before, but I hope you come back and see me again. My name is Jill. Today we're going to be talking about $500 worth of products that I personally have never tried before. So let's get right into the video. So this is actually my second time trying to record this video. I didn't like the way that the first time worked out. The the video was really blurry, you couldn't see in depth what I was doing, how I was applying it, and so, as you can see, the brushes are dirty from the current video that I, from the previous video that I did record. So, with that being said, let's just get right into it. So, this is the Pretty Fresh Hy Hydrating Primer by ColourPop and it looks like this. It says it is a lightweight hydrating primer that refreshes, preps the skin for makeup application. And it also says to apply it with the tinted moisturizer, which I do have, but I'm going to do the entire line of the Pretty Fresh collection in a different video since I could not get all the products for this video. Okay, so first of all, we're going to get our hair out of the way so that it doesn't get in any makeup. So now we are going to put the primer on with the tips of our fingers. We're just going to take one, I'm going to take one and a half or so pump because I have a big old forehead that needs to be primed. And we're just going to take it all over, rub it in. all over the face, down a little bit into the neck. And now we are going to take the Dior Backstage Foundation in the shade One Cool Rosy, and we are going to apply it with the Luxie Complete Face Brush Set. I'm going to take the foundation, and as you can see, it is a squeezy tube. It doesn't have a pump. You can just put it on your hand like that. I'm going to take a few drops. Not that much. As you can see, it is a liquidy consistency for a foundation. We are going to take the Round Top Blender Luxie 532 brush. It is a very dense foundation brush. And actually, with this brush, the first time I used it. I didn't like it so much at the beginning, but towards the end of it, I was not mad at it whatsoever. Gonna take some more. We are going to take the foundation on this brush, move the earrings out of the way, go down the neck, make sure it's even with our neck because we don't want to turn to the side. And everybody see that we have completely two different shades of skin within the same inch of each other. So, my review of this brush so far with just applying the foundation is that it can streak as much as any other foundation brush will. It's definitely not as convenient as a beauty blender. I personally love beauty blenders. I use them every single day to apply my face makeup and have never really been in love with any brush, but I do see myself reaching for this in the future if I'm just bored of a beauty blender on some rare occasion. Next, we are going to go in with the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. It looks like this cute little tube. I have the shade Fair 07C. And I think it is a great shade for highlighting concealer. Not a very natural concealer, but, well, shade-wise. I do think it goes great, actually. I'm not going to apply them both at the same time, just in case it is a quick drying concealer. So the brush I'm going to be using is the Luxie 213 Eye Shading Brush in the face set. We're just going to blend that in, pulling it up, getting underneath the eye. 
I might go in with a beauty blender just to even it out if I'm not happy with how it is applying. But it seems to be carrying the product really well. So I'm going to take a dry beauty blender and pat it in just so it can take away that extra concealer that I don't need. So immediately I noticed with that concealer that it did have a lot of pigment and a little goes a long way. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, next, now that that's done, I actually have never tried the Cody Airspun powder. And I still have the seal and the little cloud-like puffy thing that goes with it that I just almost dropped. And I got the tone Naturally Neutral. It says that it is a loose foundation as well as a setting powder. And here's what the packaging looks like. And we are just going to dab that into the pan. Just take a little bit of that at a time. And I'm going to take the Luxie 680 Pro Precision Face Brush from the face set that I showed you earlier. And it did pick up that powder really, really well. We're just going to dab that off a little bit. Before we do that, though, we are going to go back in with that sponge. Even out the concealer. And just go right back into it. It kind of smells like baby powder. <laughs> like that's the first thing that I think when I smell this powder. Do the same thing with the other side. You always want to repress your concealer in with a sponge or your brush or whatever you're using with your concealer because as soon as you set it there is no going back those creases those lines and your concealer are going to be there for the rest of the day because powder is the cement of makeup so now we're gonna let that sit for about five minutes while we go in to do brows so I bought the Cabrow Benefit Pomades in shade 1 and 2. I was very, very similar to the shade 2 instead of 1. One was much of a cooler toned blonde, and the other one was more of a dark, warm colored brown. And I was really impressed with that because I like the shade range. I love that the brush comes out of the top. I think that's just so cute. I think it looks like a Victorian building from long, long ago. So we are going to dip the brush into the pomade. Okay, so my camera cut out while I was showing you how to do my natural looking brows. So we're just going to go in again. Like I was saying with the other, I just take a spoolie go upwards gonna brush it out and I put a soft little line right below that like line in your brow and put two little lines there one short one a bit longer and then I keep going ever so slightly kind of filling those spaces in my brows but not overdoing it because, like I was saying, I like a natural looking brow. And after that product is in there, I'm going to take that same spoolie and shimmy it upwards into the rest of my brow hairs. Diffusing that line, carrying the product up, keeping that natural looking brow look. So now I'm going to take that same powder brush that we were using to apply the powder, kind of dust it off of my hand and swipe away the excess, carrying it upwards. Never push it down when you're taking off the excess because that will just create a mess with the extra powder that is still on the face. Okay, now that that's all set into place, the next thing we're going to do is contour, which I'm going to be using the 
Hula Light bronzer. So the brush we are going to be using to apply it, even though it does come with a cute little, actually I think it was the blue one, it came with a cute little brush, but I just don't ever see myself using those brushes. And I'm going to take the small contour brush 512 Luxie, which is this one right here out of the Summer Days brush set. And I'm going to dip in ever so slightly, tap off the brush, and I personally like to start up and go this way, but I also go above in that natural line in my cheekbone. So make the bronzing position. <laughs> giving you that light, not too much, not too little. I also like to make a bit of a triangle look, starting slight here and going up like this, making more of that cheekbone sculpt out look. Same thing on the other side. Start. Start down here, go up, dip in, tap off. What I'm noticing about this bronzer from only using it this one time is that it is very forgiving. It's very easy to blend, not too harsh. If you make a mistake, blending it out with, let's say, that contour, I mean, that, um, powder brush we were using earlier and stamping that took so much color away that that quickly yeah. doing the same thing with the forehead I'm just going to dip in tap off the product well the excess product kinda just lightly contour my forehead not making it as prominent as these kinda just Trying to make the effect of a smaller forehead. Because <laughs> what girl doesn't need that? Probably most, but I do. And I'm just going to finish contouring up there, adding just the slightest bit of, co of color. And then next we are going to go in with blushes. For blush, I have two products. I'm going to be using the Ipsy collaboration with Betty Boop. I am not a buyer of BoxyCharm or Ipsy, even though a couple of the things that I am using in today's video are things sold in their packages. I bought these all separately, some from brands, some I bought from friends, just all over the place. So the Betty Boop palette looks like this. The second product is the Dandelion Blush. It is a very cool toned rosy color. Okay, And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush, which is the highlighting and blush brush. I'm going to dip it into the Dandelion Blush first, tap off the excess and do circular motions from the apples of my face upwards, blending in the contour and the highlighted parts in my face. Okay, and now I'm going to go in with this color right here, which is you're a peach and to me the shade was more of a blush topper kind of like that iridescent not a lot of pigment but just enough to cover up a super harsh line in your blush if 
you went too much into it. For highlighters, I actually bought multiples from different brands. I bought two from a completely new brand that I've never tried before, the Space Case Cosmetics Highlighters. I can't remember if I like the shade 1C or 1B. One was just way too dark. So 1C is the one that I personally loved. It is a white highlighter with a golden glow underneath. And the second one is Seen From Space 1B, which is this beautiful copper shade that was just way too dark for my fair skin. So I'm just going to go in and do exactly what I did last time. And this was an amazing nose highlight, and I'm just going to take it on my finger. It is a cream to powder, and I'm going to do my nose highlight, which I call my boop, but beautiful. So next, I'm going to go in with this, and even though I already have opinions on this from the first time I wore it, I am going to show you what it looks like. And with this, I'm just going to take it right up my cheeks on that highlight brush, the Tapered Highlight 522 Lexi brush. And for me, this was not something that I would repurchase again. It's cute to have in your collection. It's not bad if you want something super subtle just to put on some naked bare skin see if it does it any better right there. Nothing. Okay. Just, just even that out. It actually does do something. Okay, and I'm just gonna take it up. This is not the highlight that I'm gonna wear by itself, but I did want to show you what it looked like on the skin. Very, very fair, almost dust-like beautiful packaging. So next we are going to use the Ofra Star Island highlighter and go over that highlight and there we go. Next thing after highlight that definitely illuminated the glow, by the way. I think I am going to use this to do my Cupid's bow area after we do lips. Actually, let's do lips right now. Let's do it out of order and do lips before... Oh, there, there. We do eyes. So, what I got was the Beauty Bakery Cosmetics Lip Whips in four different shades. They look like this from all sides. Keep her... Super cute palm packed. <laughs> These aren't even compacts. <laughs> Super cute packaging. And we have the shades Mon Cherry, which is this very bright red color. Then we have a, another red. But this one is darker. It's called Cranberry Stiletto. As you can see, I'm going to put it right below Mon Cherry and show. It's just the tiniest bit darker. It has more of a purple undertone. And this one has more of, it's just red. The next one I want to try or swatch is the Salted Caramel Mocha. And it is a cool tone brown lip color. These all dry down matte. It doesn't take very long from what I understand for them to dry down and they will not come off for the life of them unless you use a oil-based makeup remover. Like my favorite makeup remover right now is the Mercellar Cleansing Water. Very inexpensive does its job. I can normally get all of my face makeup and both of my eyes by using two cotton rounds. It just works so much better. This one is Louvre Palace, Louvre, 
L-O-U-V-R-E, palace. And we're going to take that right here. That's what it looks like. It's a very rosy terracotta color. And I think actually I am going to take this one and do my lips because if you can't see my shirt, it's really cute and I think that that would be the best for today. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to start on my top lip. already seeing the lip dry down pretty nicely. It is still a bit tacky since I've only been wearing it for about three minutes now. Next, I'm going to do eyes. What other step do I have other than mascara? We're going to take the Luminous Eye brush set by Luxie. <laughs> We're going to take the concealer we used on our under eyes. I'm only going to take one small sweep and blend it out with that brush. Yeah. Now we're going to take the Luma's eye brush set and the tapered blending brush from the face brush set. These two are from the Summer Days set. And all of these are from the Luminous brush set. So we're going to take all of these. And I'm super excited to show you what eyeshadow palettes I got for this video. I got all of the new Storybook Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes. They look like this. Super cute. One is Briar Rose. Little Briar Rose, which is the big book. Robin Hood, which is the smaller green book. And the red book is Little Red Riding Hood. These ones have six shades. This one has 12. They are a mix of metallics, shimmers, and mattes. And I think for the majority of the eye look, I am going to be going into the Little Briar Rose palette. We are going to first go into this shade, Enchanted. The large shading brush because I just want to go right in to my inner corner and kind of make that, even though it's a shiny shade, make that the base for the beginning of my eyeshadow. It's a beautiful color. It barely had any fallout. It had a little bit, but that's just probably because I was being a little rough with it. I think, without using the other colors so far, the Enchanted is actually going to be my favorite, but I might be wrong still. So next we are going to go into, I think, okay, let's put down a base color first. I'm going to take Spindle with the 131 Mini Angled Brush and just kind of feather that color in. I like to put down the shape that I'm going for before I actually put in the other color. It makes it a lot easier for me to know where I'm going to put things if I can see the outline. Also, I want to mention with that technique that I just said, always use some very light colors like this color right here, woodland or spindle, or something very easily corrected. Light colors are very forgiving. Darker colors, like if I did that with prints, there would be no going back. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go in with uh, Dahlia, Beauty, and Grim. So the first one I said we are going to do Dahlia. So I'm going to take the same brush we used for Enchanted, and I'm just going to kind of brush that off on my palm. little goes a long ways with this is what I'm understanding so far. Ooh, those blend together beautifully. And also, not to tease or anything, but I do launch two videos at the same time so that you always have something to watch next. And we will be playing with more Storybook Cosmetics palettes and some more of these ones. So after you finish watching this one, Feel free to go watch that one. Now I'm going to be taking Beauty 
I've been using this brush pretty much the whole time. It's just very easy with packing on glitters. They had different finishes is my point. Now I'm going to be going in with a different brush. I know, we're shocked. The Tapered Blending 229 Luxie brush, which is the only eye brush that came in the face set. And we're going to go in with Grim. By the way, we just went in with Beauty. Okay, let's start over. Beginning was Enchanted, and then Dahlia, Beauty, and now we're going to go in with Grimm to add a little bit of a matte, since apparently I was very inspired by the shiny colors. And this is what I'm talking about with that technique I was talking about earlier. I already knew where I wanted the shadow to go to, and I could make it even on both sides. So that was my beginner's trick of the day. So if that helps anyone, I would love to see what you do with it and how well it works for you. And I will be attaching some form of my social medias down below for you guys to tag me in the looks that you make with the products that I recommend or that you've seen me use that you wanted to try out for yourselves. I would love to see what you guys come up with. Now that that's done, we're going to take a clean brush and we are going to go in with the 121 Mini Tapered Brush into Woodland to start. That one had a lot of fallout compared to the other. Grim had no fallout. We're just going to take that up there, kind of lighten out the top of the look, carry it down so that everything kind of ties together. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to take that highlight. Oh, and we still haven't done the Cupid's bow highlight. I was trying to open it from the hinge side. So I'm going to take this one and this one, the 1B1, and the Ofra highlighter. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to grab this one. It is the Mini Round 141 Luxie Brush. Like I said, it is a cream, so it did dent when I pushed the brush in it, even though I was being very light. I'm just going to highlight my brow bone. Just go. I get excited with shiny things. But what makeup fanatic doesn't? We are also going to take the brush I was using earlier for highlighter, the Tapered Highlight 522 brush, and we're just going to Lightly. This is way too big. What am I doing? We are going to take a different brush. We are going to take... First we are going to blow out all this stuff. Ooh. Ooh. It gives a very icy look. I think I still want to go in with more of this. And I'm going to do... Um, I'm just going to hulk back it real quick and like push my shoulders up. Add a little bit of highlight right there. Just kind of everywhere. Hulk backing it. I love it. Okay. No, I, I can't. Okay. Next, and I think finally... Yeah, this is it. This is the Better Than Sex Mascara by Too Faced. So it does have that consistency of it looks a little, a little wet, not goopy or anything, just, just a little wet. So I'm going to put it on my top lashes first and if you are a beginner to makeup, do not do that thing where you're like, because it will not work. It will put product down here where you don't want it. When you look up too quick, it'll put up here. It's just a very bad habit. So what I want you to do is if you are starting out or if you don't already have a technique, put it right underneath your lashes and like wiggle it up. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. 
It also separates your lashes. This is a really good mascara. I'm not having any issues with it. It's not clumping. It's not pushing my eyelashes together. I also have extremely long eyelashes. I know they are my favorite. I have never worn a pair of falsies. Assume mascara face position. I also do not do my bottom lashes because they always wind up looking like spider legs because they go all the way down here because they're so long. And I know a lot of you are like, stop bragging because I know, but we're just going to go in again. By the way, the container, super cute. I think all pink is never the wrong idea. My background actually, before I bought this one, used to be a pink sheet. Also, if you're wondering about my lighting, I am just using my natural light for my window and a ring light. The ring light, the guy who sold it to me, his, um, his link will be in my description because I really think that he had amazing prices. He was really sweet, supportive of what I was trying to do with it. And I think that people like that should get more recognition for what they're selling and how they're selling it. Okay, so I think this is going to be my look for today. My final thoughts, let's start from the beginning and go up. The primer, amazing. I loved it. It's making my foundation look phenomenal. It adds a luminous glow even under the mattest of foundations and I think that that's great and I'm really excited to try this in the pretty fresh video that I will be making separately from this one using all of their new products love this foundation it has not creased we've been recording for about two hours now and I do not have any creasing I also am very young and don't have any particular lines in my face that I worry about yet but, like, even from smiling through this whole video, I don't have any smile lines. I don't have any curves right here, even though I go like this quite often. <laughs> and I love how I can still see my freckles through it. And I'm sure if I built it up, it would have been more full coverage. But I still see my freckles, my freckles on my nose, on my cheeks. And I do love a natural looking foundation that just feels like a second skin. And I feel like that's exactly what this is. Next, the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer. I think it did amazing. It covered up my dark circles. Like, it looked like I put on foundation and the concealer was just already there. Like, it blended in with the Dior Backstage Foundation really nicely. Next, I used the Coty Airspun Loose Powder. I actually really loved this. It has not caked up my face where I applied it at all like it's very matte nothing comes off when I touch under my eyes no product comes off it set it and it's gonna stay for the rest of the day once again it was the shade naturally neutral I will be using this again and I don't think I'll ever run out because it did have 2.3 ounces in it and next even though most of the products are here on my table I did like this brush set. Do I think that you could have just gone and got the Real Technique brushes and gotten the same quality? Yes. I do not think that this foundation brush did anything particularly magical. Did I think it worked? Yes, it spread my foundation. It worked real nicely. Because I have it, I will use it. But I'm not saying that you should go out and buy this brush set. It didn't wow me but it did work next actually while we're at brushes let's just finish with brushes i loved this um bronzer contour brush i thought it did great i personally love a smaller brush for contour so that they had a small contouring brush in that set i loved it i will be using this probably in my everyday life the eyeshadow brushes, I used that one a lot. I loved it. I do not think 
that they are bad brushes. I think that they are great quality. I will be using these. I do see myself grabbing for them when I'm applying my eyeshadow in the future. Both of the blushes I used were amazing. I will be trying this one out shortly and I will post pictures on my social media of me using more of the products here in case you were wondering what certain shades looked like. I usually use the Butter Bronzer. This is much more cool toned and light. I did appreciate that. The Butter Bronzer, I use the lightest shade that they have and it's much more orange toned and I actually think that I love this a little bit more. Next thing, Space Case Highlighters. Yes, these are really inexpensive and they're cream highlighters so they're going to be blinding. Like look at my nose. I did love this. I put this pretty much everywhere. I would not recommend this one. The Dandelion Twinkle Benefit Highlighter. I will be trying more Benefit highlighters in the future just so that I can see if I just don't like Benefit's formula or if it was just this one powder that I didn't love. Where did I put them? It's right here. The mascara. I do love it. I will be using it because I have it. Do I think you need it? No, I think that there are lots of mascaras that could do just as well of a job. But I th I keep saying that it's almost over, but I still have quite a few things to tell you about. This did an amazing job for that natural look that I love with my brows. These had this on for about, I'd say an hour now. Hasn't budged, isn't cracking. Even though I talk a lot, it has not creased. It's still exactly where I put it in the waterline of my mouth. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is the palettes. I love these, I didn't go into these. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you like this content. I will be uploading two videos at a time, like I've said. And I hope to see you next time.